Okay, so you guys who watched part one will know that uh, we pretty much repaired a Ural truck almost 100%. Just had one tire that needed replacing. We had a whole bunch of stuff stashed in it. And then uh, some guys appeared out of nowhere. And uh, I killed one of them, but one of them uh, who I have no idea where he came from. I suspect now that he may have just spawned in there after being told that uh, his other, the other dude was going to meet him there in the jeep. But anyway, as you can see, I respawned. Uh, I actually found a bicycle on the way back up here. And I rode the bicycle... And this is on a, on a different server to the first one. So uh, what I did was I did join a different server because that first server had a lag spike that happened uh, just about every 30 seconds. It was a little bit annoying. Some of you guys that play DayZ may know, may know what I mean by that. But uh, you, you can see I've only got uh, basically an end field. Uh, I did find an Alice backpack. Uh, but, it, but I've just basically come all the way up. From I think uh, Camarovo spawn on this bicycle, and uh, as luck would have it, the very next server uh, had the Ural uh, or, or an unrepaired Ural back at this same location. So it's definitely a spawn where this truck spawns uh, normally. So the mission now is solo to repair this truck from scratch. And I'll be uh, heading to the Northwest Airfield to get parts for it as well. Hopefully it's going to be a little little bit quicker uh, using this bicycle as transportation. So I'm just going to cut out some parts of this and show you guys where I find the, uh, the different stuff and the stages of repairing that. And, uh, and then finally we'll come back and hopefully we can get this truck working. Okay, so I've stashed my bicycle in the woods, uh, not too far from the perimeter fence here at the Northwest Airfield. This is the spot, guys. This is the spot where I get all my engine parts in this uh, part of the map. And uh, it's right next to the North uh, Northwest Airfield barracks, the northern barracks. <clears throat> and uh, not that far from the uh, fire station either. Uh, this shed here, sometimes you can get engine parts up on the catwalk so always check that spot there there's just tin cans in this case and uh, occasionally we get uh, like one or two down here in the floor as well and then there are actually three uh, two room sheds out here as well in the yard where you can get engine parts and sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get like four or five tires in one in one go but otherwise you might have to uh, just wait <clears throat> come back um, and keep farming it until you get what you need so I'm just uh, looking around here I've actually got a smoke grenade that I'm gonna throw here and that just draws all the zombies away because sometimes the zombies do spawn inside these uh, sheds that I want to loot and uh, <clears throat> they won't move out of them unless you throw a smoke grenade so if you don't want to aggro the zombies, that is a good tactic to follow. Now it's it's very easy to aggro aggro zombies in this area because you're walking across this concrete floor or uh, yard. So we've got more tin cans here. It's one of those really unlucky spawns where. Where you just get tin cans everywhere, you know what I mean? But I do get a toolbox here. And that is essential because I would not be able to repair the truck without a toolbox. So remember guys, I just basically respawned and uh, I think it was something like um, 8pm. And I get 8pm when those guys killed me and stole the, stole the first truck. So I get uh, <coughs> I get a fuel tank here, which is super lucky. So I'll grab that. So tool toolbox and a fuel tank already in one hit here of the barracks. And these things take up uh, six six slots, is it, or, or four slots? Looks like it's four slots. So just make sure you have enough space in your pack when you transfer it. 
And uh Cool. We'll just be checking these other sheds here as well. The other rooms in this shed. There's one to the left here. There's no car parts though. There's a little bit of ammo and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I don't have a gun for it. But there is a smoke grenade. Um, I think that's the kind that you need a rocket launcher for though. Okay, the last shed here is right next to the barracks. Now, from this position, in third person, and this is this guy's is another reason that it's it's a good idea to use third person. You can actually see over the top of the fence into the barracks, so you can actually check out if anyone's in the hallway of the barracks from here. You can see there's just a zombie. There's actually a zombie. I think there's a zombie inside the barracks there. And we've got some more ammunition here that I cannot use at this point. But another smoke grenade that we can throw, so I might actually use that. And uh, when I come out here to find these engine parts, I often hit the barracks nearly nearly every time. Uh, and uh, pretty much every time I do that, I find a good gun and I'll be able to bring that back and stash that in the truck until it's repaired. And I'll, I'll end up having like four... You know, three or four really good guns with ammo and other gear stashed in the truck once it's repaired. So that works out pretty well. I'm going to throw this other smoke grenade over here just to try and get those zombies that are inside the barracks to leave it. And then I'll be able to hit the barracks. You can see all the zombies. Now the zombies do get instantly aggroed when you throw, throw a smoke grenade. So you want to make sure that there's none that are going to run past you because then they will attack you when they run towards that smoke grenade. But you can see that those zombies left the barracks. So we'll hit, it, hit the barracks and see what we can find there. Just as a side mission while we're getting these engine parts. Now I already looked down the hallway. I couldn't see anyone in there. But that doesn't mean there wasn't someone in one of these rooms here. Uh, the best thing to do is always to be careful to check the side windows before you go in. But I'm going gung-ho here. I'm just going to go straight in. Um, because there was a zombie in here as well, it's pretty clear that no one else was in here or, or it would have been obviously attacking them. And we find a bit of gear. Here's a PDW. I'll take that. Thank you very much. And we'll stick that in the pack. So, uh, handguns take up five spaces, for those of you that don't know that. I'm still yet to find night vision goggles, ever. And I've hit the barracks a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. The only time I ever found night vision goggles was when I killed some dude. In uh, Cherno, actually. We get some morphine now, which is pretty sweet. <coughs> some LMG ammo, which you can't really use. <coughs> and there's a zombie that's glitching through the wall there. I don't know where he came from. But here we hit the jackpack. Jack. The jackpot. Not the jackpack. <coughs> it's uh, it's actually an M4A1 hollow with ammunition. So I'll grab that, get rid of the Enfield, and we get the heck out of here. Okay, so I've done a bit of uh, farming there at the Northwest Airfield uh, for car parts. I get back to where I stash my bike down in the forest, not far from the perimeter fence. And uh, it's time to head back. And uh, because I can't fit any more stuff in and we'll repair the uh, truck and then head back for the rest of the parts that we need. This uh, journey using a bicycle takes about 10 minutes from the Northwest Airfield to where the truck is, by the way. And uh, after a while you really get to know the route uh, pretty well. Yeah, but uh, the bicycle is, is awesome. I mean, you can see here I'm doing a 55... 54-55 through, through the fields. 
And just skipping ahead here, we're coming up to where the truck is. There is a deer stand, by the way, just near where this truck spawn is. So you can actually hit that on the way to and from the airfield to find extra guns and ammo. Pro tip. <laughs> but, yeah, we're coming up to the, uh, the truck here. And uh, as I said, this is on a different server to the first one that got that got stolen by those by that bandit that killed me out of nowhere. But yeah, my my theory now on that is that I'm pretty sure that that second second bandit must have just spawned in there because there was absolutely no one there camping the place when I was repairing the vehicle. And uh, they just came out of nowhere. There was only one guy in the Jeep, but uh, the other guy, um, I have no idea what his position was. He just seemed to come out of nowhere behind me. But there you go. Easy come, easy go in DayZ. You can't get super attached to your stuff. Uh, it's not that hard to get it all back again anyway. As you'll see by the end of this. Uh... Cool, so we're going to repair some stuff here, and I actually found an engine block as well, so we'll repair that, and uh, we'll also repair the body with some scrap metal. So what you need minimum to repair a vehicle, guys, is four wheels uh, and an engine block. Now, unless you want to blow up as soon as you hit a bump, you also want to have the uh, fuel tank parts, and then you're good to go, basically. But uh, the scrap metal just repairs the hull as well, and you will need fuel as well. So, jerry cans and a toolbox. Cool. So, we're putting a wheel on here, getting everything done here, but there's still a few more parts before we can drive it. And we will have to head back to the northwest airfield yet again. But uh, what I tend to do is, uh, while I was repairing this solo, is I'll actually chuck my primary weapon into the uh, back of the truck. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, that lets me then carry another primary weapon back from the barracks so I can just keep gathering weapons and uh, if you've got an M1911 um, as long as it's not long dist a long distance firefight you can pretty much take out anyone in close quarters with that thing just as good as an assault rifle if you know what you're doing So again, just a bit of inventory management here. You actually have to have the item in your inventory rather than your backpack in order to repair. So that's why I'm switching it across here. We're just refueling. And then I should be able to put the fuel tank on as well. Now I'm just going to check what needs to be done on it. Okay, so we're about half full with fuel. And we've still got a couple of tires that need to get repaired. In fact, they're completely missing on the front there. So we'll repair the fuel tank and then we'll head back for the tires that we need to finish this thing. So I'm just clearing out all the stuff that I'm not going to need. So I'm just going to move the M4A1 hollow into the into the vehicle and hope that someone else doesn't find it before I get back. This time it would be pretty unlucky if it happened to me twice. But you never know. Okay, so I decided to uh, 
save the uh, truck at this point, and then it's back to the bicycle. Trust the old, old farm bike. And uh, <clears throat> one spot I know to get this bicycle from is uh, pretty much if you've seen my bicycle fail video where I first found one, that's the spot I always get a bicycle from Zelnogorsk. Okay, so nearly back at the Northwest Airfield here on the old bicycle. And uh, the area that I, that I uh, go in from is about halfway along the northern and you'll see this big barn down here to the left. You may have glimpsed that. And I usually stash the bicycle up here somewhere. Uh, on this trip. That I do. Just in the trees here somewhere. I don't bother hiding it uh, too carefully. Because I'm not going to be hopefully that long. And uh, save that. And then we head in uh, through through the perimeter fence, just opposite that disc stand there, which I do hit as well. There's actually a couple of deer stands on the way from the truck. So hopefully we can find some more parts up here to uh, finish off the repairs to the truck and finally get to drive it. Okay, so after uh, much searching and farming, I found uh, the remaining parts that I needed. There's, there's a wheel right there. Uh, I don't need the windscreen glass for the truck because the windscreen is in perfect condition. So at this point, it's like, uh, let's get the hell out of here. And uh, I run for the fence and back to the bicycle uh, for the trip back to the truck for the final repairs. <laughs> 